All right. How much do you know about the book of Habakkuk? Probably one of those things that, yeah, we may have read it once, maybe twice. But Habakkuk lists the ills of his society. He lists destruction and violence are all around. And in his day, we're talking about 609 to 605, this letter is written. And the, the children of Israel, the first deportation will happen in 597 B.C. The second deportation will happen in 586 B.C., where Jerusalem will be destroyed. So destruction and violence are all around him. There is strife and conflict. The law is paralyzed, justice is perverted, and the righteous are hemmed in by the wicked. So Habakkuk has three chapters. He asks a question in chapter 1. He asks a question in chapter 2. The Lord responds to his question in chapter 1. The Lord's response to his second question in chapter 2. And his third chapter is a prayer, which will end with part of his prayer at the end of this message. So the first question is this. Why does evil in Judah go unpunished? That's what Habakkuk Ask the Lord. Now, this is the reply that he gets. God's answer is that Babylon will punish Judah. Well, I don't think that's quite the answer he was looking for, but that's God's answer to him is why, do, why does evil in Judah go unpunished? It will be punished through the nation of Babylon. The second question that Habakkuk has, how can a just God use wicked Babylon to punish a people more righteous than themselves? God's answer is this. Babylon will punish, be punished, and faith will be rewarded. So the country of Babylon will be punished at a later date, and those who have faith will be rewarded because of their faith. So we might ask the same question today. Why does evil go unpunished in our world today? It seems like evil is all around us. And our second question is, how can a just God sit by and not punish all the evil people. I don't understand it. So when we begin to look at Habakkuk, we're going to get some answers today. On April, this, April of 1775, someone rode on a horse and said, the British are coming. Paul Revere, absolutely. Now the patriots founded our country, but they were wrestling with these same two questions. Why does evil go unpunished? And how can a just God sit by and not punish the British? That's what they would have been saying in their time and their day. So we, we today can even look at these as that we say, okay, there's evil all around us, God. Why are you just sitting and waiting and not punishing the evil people? God's statement to the Judah is I'm going to send the Babylonians to you to punish you redemptively. Could it be that redemptively God is punishing the United States and other countries because of our sin and going away from God? When we look for deliverance like Habakkuk, here's our concerns today. Who's going to be elected to be president of the United States? There's a lot of anxiety out here and out there on that question. We are concerned about civil unrest. Five Dallas policemen were killed in one evening. Other policemen are being killed throughout our country. Civil unrest. There's a wholesale dis disregard for human life. Drug addiction is rampant. People are living on streets in their cars, and there's social inequality in our country. Two weeks ago, I met a young man who was working to earn enough money so that he and his wife would not have to live in his truck another evening so they could live in a motel. There is definitely social inequality right here in Arlington. What direction is our country headed? Who will save us from moral decay? We are looking and waiting for justice just as well as Habakkuk was waiting. National deliverance and spiritual deliverance are much the same for the needs of many. 
The Revelation runner will proclaim God's justice and mercy in Jesus Christ, and the righteous will live by faith, trusting the sovereignty and the grace of Almighty God. The Lord's answer to all this is a revelation runner who proclaims this holy God who loves a world that is infested with sin. The Lord is sending redemptive punishment on us as he did the children of Israel. So when we begin to look at the social ills that we have, God is still in control as he was in the time of Judah. So here's the job description of the Revelation runner. Very simple. You're going to get a revelation. Secondly, you're going to understand it, and it will be understandable to others. And thirdly, you're going to run and herald the message. That is your job description. You're going to get a revelation. It's going to be understandable, and you got to run with the message that you have. Well, the revelation is this. The righteous will live by faith when it seems like the world around us is morally decaying. And that means that our lives are different than our society. We live to honor God versus living to honor ourselves. The righteous will rely on God in his eternal sovereignty. We wonder why God uses evil people more than we, but we see it in history when God sent the Babylonians to the Judeans. Could the issue in our society be that we have strained it straight as a country from the one true God calling evil good and good evil? This is our world today. So the issue of Police killing African Americans makes national news. But what doesn't make national news is African Americans killing African Americans. Is there an agenda out there in the news media? I think the narrative is this that people are not responsible for their own actions. There is a disregard for the law and blaming those in the blue for our social ills. That is my opinion of the national news. The root ill is this, taking God out of our country, taking God out of our schools, taking God out of our families. Families are the foundation of our community, and they are decaying morally. There is plenty of social injustice in our country and in our world today. We don't love our neighbor as we love ourselves because we are suspicious of our neighbor and we distrust our neighbor because we don't know them. This is the world that you and I live. In the wake of all this moral upheaval, there is a God who is control and who loves us. The revelation is this. There is hope in Jesus who reconciled us to our heavenly Father and the one who sent him to die has come to take away our sins. We are set free by the gospel. No matter what is happening around us in our world, we know that there is a God who loves us, a God who knows us personally, and has redeemed us by the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you'll be in the world, but not of the world. We are not to live immorally, but morally to proclaim our relationship with our King, Jesus Christ. So this message is understandable. God so loved a morally depraved world that he sent his one and only sinless son to pay for the sins of all the world and that whoever believes in him morally or immorally has the gift of eternal life. You and I are revelation runners. There is hope in us, there is love in us, and there is Jesus in us. That are, those are the qualifications to be a revelation runner. Martin Luther was a revelation runner. The Reformation will be celebrating the last Sunday of this month. Martin Luther wondered whether he would be burned at the stake as a heretic and yet Martin Luther died of old age in his bed. 
Paul Revere wondered if he would be in prison and killed because he was fighting the British. Paul Revere died in his late 80s. We too wonder what will happen to us. So when you begin to look at your life, the years, days, minutes, seconds that you will live, do you ever wonder how God is going to use you? How he's going to take you out of your comfort zone? How you will be that revelation runner to family, to friends, to neighbors, to share the good news that in spite of of what is happening in our society, there is hope because there are people just like you and me in our world today who love Jesus. Get out in our community and you will see people who love Jesus. I had the opportunity this week to be at two functions where the mayor was, where pastors were and lay people were. And there are people in our community who love Jesus. And I can tell you, our mayor loves Jesus just as well. So in reality, justice and redemptive correction are established by God himself, no matter which instrument he uses. So is God using I want to use the word radical Islam to get our attention. It's throughout the world and has touched our shores as well. Is God calling us to become the nation that was founded on biblical principles of believing in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? See, God is calling our nation back through Jesus Christ. As a Christian, we pray for our country. We pray for our presidential elections. We pray for our state elections. We pray for our city elections. We pray for those elected officials that they will know Jesus as Lord and Savior and make decisions that honor him. Living as a Christian, in the reality, sin is pervasive but also love is pervasive because Jesus Christ has loved us so that we, in essence, are here to love one another. We are called to live in faith and herald the message of the gospel of grace. Martin Luther examined his theology in light of Romans chapter 1, verse 17, which reads, for in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as is written, the righteous will live by faith. St. Paul quotes Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. This righteousness is revealed that comes from God. It is not our self-righteousness, but God makes us righteous in his holy sight through the blood of Jesus Christ. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, he has called us to faith to proclaim Jesus as a revelation runner. Martin Luther was the herald of his day. You and I are the heralds of our day. You see, St. Paul was also a revelation runner. As I read again, Philippians chapter 3, not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. A revelation runner runs for eternity. You're running towards eternity. You're running toward Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You're running into his arms, his loving arms that on the cross paid for our sins. We are running to him, and we are sharing the good news of the Revelation runner that there is a God who is in control of a world that is going to hell. There is a God who loves us and who calls us to run with the revelation of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. St. Paul went forward in living his daily life to the point 
of pointing to the cross. That should be our goal as well, is to point to the cross that we are forgiven. And because we are forgiven, we forgive others. We take that message of salvation out into our community. Habakkuk wrote, the righteous will live by faith in a God who is sovereign and holy and one who will send his son to save us from our sin. This is the revelation, the final revelation. It is clear to those who run with the tablet. So no matter the outcome of our national elections, God is in control. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about whoever wins the election. God is still in control. No matter if you like who's president or you dislike, God is still in control. You see, God loves us in Jesus when we herald the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to hear what Habakkuk writes after these two times that God answered his questions. This is his prayer. This is how it concludes. Look at how destitute it is in his time, and look at how he is filled with joy and love towards God. Verse 17 of chapter 3. Though the fig, tree, fig trees do not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the sheep pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in my God and my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. That's how Habakkuk ended his prayers. No food. No cattle, no sheep, no nothing. And he is filled with joy. And we think we got it hard. Come on, let's get over ourselves. There's a God who loves us. We are a land of plenty, but we're going in the wrong direction. We are revelation runners. And all God's people say, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Habakkuk, the questions that he asked in his days. How can evil go unpunished, and how can a just God just sit by and not punish evil in our world? We pray, O oh Lord, is that you help us to understand our lives. Our lives are devoted to Jesus Christ, our King, our Savior, our Lord. May we continue to grow in your grace, knowing you full well, that because of your love, because of your grace, we are children of grace. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's children say, Amen.